Whoop whoop! The iconic UFO Satina DS Super PH500M is back and today on my wrist. A legendary tool watch that contributed in the discovery of the space 52 years ago. So. The symbol of longevity and robustness, the turtle of Certina is once again in the spotlight at Brave Beaters. Being a fan of the brand across 2020 and 2021, I reviewed both the DSPH200M, the DS Action Diver in 38mm, the Spectacular DS Chronograph and now both the 500m Super PHs, which obviously happened with the help of Certina. They sent this legendary diver for review. And knowing very well the technology applied in these double security divers, we can say that today we are reviewing the toughest diver watch of Certina, the most robust watch that contributed in the development and the discovery of the space, but not towards the sky, but towards the depths of the oceans. This is a beautiful throwback to the years 1968-1969, when NASA needed worthy diver watches, tools for their equinauts. In the late 60s, the US scientists wanted to emulate the space conditions and to understand how humans can cohabitate in different environments. So this is how the Tech Type 1 project was born, its goal being to understand how people behave in small groups in hostile environments. So the Econauts had to pass the social psychological experiment. And if the Omega Speedmaster was the master of the space, the DS2 Super PH500M was the perfect wristwatch with a higher depth rating and a demonstrated robust for such a mission. So yes, according to multiple sources, even a user from my channel, the DS2 Super PH model was the preferred diver watch of the Econauts in the Tech Type missions because it was heavier duty. It was robust and reliable compared to the Rolex Submariner or the Sea Dweller prototype. Now I bet you want to know what are the differences between the orange dial and the new one launched a few weeks ago. Well. Certina celebrated 50 years since the first DS Super PH was launched, specifically in 1969, and they launched the orange dial version. The diver was made in the collaboration with the VDST German Diving Association, a diver with a vintage character but better tailored for modern diving. The watch comes with an extra diver's extension strap and the certification ISO 6425 standard. And yes, even though it is part of the heritage collection, it feels a bit more contemporary. Now the grayscale or the black and white version has exactly the same measurements. The case layout and the dial layout are the same. However, the spirit of the 69 UFO model can be found better in this 2021 Super PH. It feels that the matte dark gray dial coexists better with the tall chapter ring. Because on the orange version, for example, I always notice the tall part of the brush chapter ring. Where here I barely notice it, so it feels like the gray black composition simply works better. And the result is a tool with an elegant aspect that can be worn on a daily basis. Now if I was head of design at Certina, I would have offered potentially a patina version of the dial with patina lumen indexes, I would have narrowed a bit the base of the sword arrow hands and I would have tried a version of the minute hand in orange. Guys, if you like this video so far, please subscribe for future updates. It really matters for the future of the channel. Thank you very much. And as general specs we have a diver watch on a stainless steel case measuring 43mm in diameter but it does not feel wearing that big with a thickness of 14.95mm and a lug width of 20mm and a short lug to lug of only 48mm so it stays pretty compact on the wrist. It features a flat sapphire crystal, an aluminium bezel insert and a hexagonal ring that allows you to unscrew and change the crystal if needed. The signed crown ensures a water resistance of 500 meters and inside the heart of this legend is equipped with a solid movement, the Powermatic 8611 with an 80 hour power reserve and a Nivacron anti-magnetic balance spring. This is a movement that I am really pleased with and a lot of people are against this movement because it's not easy to be serviced or because it might contain plastic pieces. For me it is a solid movement that keeps a greater power reserve and a greater accuracy. Period. In depth the case has a beautiful silhouette, a vintage shape that I like a lot. Cetina really followed the design of the iconic DS2 Super PH. 
we can spot a slightly curved case from the side. Then looking towards the top we can spot a small spacing followed by the straight bezel disc and then the hexagonal part. Everything that you see here are vintage inspired characteristics of the 60s and the 70s divers. Now you will probably ask what was the need of the spacing between the case and the bezel disc. Well the main purpose is the unique feature to push and rotate the bezel to avoid changing by accident the bezel rotation time. So definitely a unique and a safe tool for professional divers. The body of this diver has a fully polished case, all the facets, the outer ring, even the hexagonal ring are finished in mirror polish. And here we can spot from this picture borrowed from vintage13as.ch which I advise you to visit and to discover the fully super PH500M story, the difference between the old Tektite model and the new one. And then on the case back we have the famous double security logo, the turtle and the symbol of robustness and longevity. Already the characteristics of the brand. On this model we have the aluminium insert narrowed compared to the ones from the DSPH200M models and a unidirectional bezel with 60 clicks that can be actioned only when it's pushed. Another unique feature is definitely the hexagon ring that can allow quickly to service the watch on the field. With the help of a wrench, you can unscrew quickly and replace the crystal if needed. And moving to the dial, we have a matte dark grey dial that contrasts the minute loomed indexes. The crosshair is present as well but painted in white. Also the iconic sword hands are kept but this time finished in polish. If we remember the orange dial version we had the same hands but made in black PVD. Anyway the review of the orange dial version can be found on the top right corner. And the loomed indexes are as usual painted in Swiss blue superluminova that stays better charged than the green loom for a longer period. And strap wise I have to tell you that the new DS Super PH is equipped with a narrow strap with an interesting carbon like pattern. The pattern is made with grey tones next to the black ones so it gives a metallic tone to it. In reality it is a very comfortable NATO strap. It is solid but thicker than a regular NATO but stays very comfy and is made out of recycled tide ocean material so recycled plastic from the waste of the ocean. And this is an extra thing that I appreciate about Certina because they have a specific interest in the health of the ocean, also the protection of the turtles. And as for how it wears, even though this is a genuine vintage inspired tool watch with a depth rating of 500 meters and a height of almost 15 millimeters, the watch wears great because of the short lug to lug distance of 48 millimeters. It lays down very well on the entire surface of the wrist. It doesn't matter on a bracelet, on a NATO or on a genuine tropic strap. But to conclude, definitely another spectacular reissue from the brand. This was an expected grayed out version to the iconic DS2 Super PH, the UFO model. And in my view, this is a worthy brave beater on the channel that is already qualified in the position number 13 in the Hall of Fame next to the DSPH200M. And as overall feedback, I noticed that this model was pretty welcomed by the audience. And as usual, in the end, I'm really curious to know what do you think about the orange dial versus the grayed out version. Please let me know in the comments section. And as usual, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for future updates. And until next time. Be brave, but stay safe.